Hi, today we're going to cover the important points of setting up and cutting thin sections on the ultramicrotome. Okay, our first step to getting thin sections on the ultramicrotome is to place the sample that's mounted into the sample holder into the sample rod. If we take a quick look at the tip of the sample, you can see it's already been trimmed into a nice pyramid. It's already been a uh, thick section, so that's why it's so smooth on the, f on the face of the black. It goes into the sample arm, like that. That's the part that moves it up and down over the knife. And then it's important that you remember to tighten it using the set screw that's on the side. Now we need to stick a knife into the knife holder. There's a knife already prepared with a boat, and that goes into the knife stage. You push it up against the forward stop and then and also against the side, and then you tighten the screw on the knife stage. It's important that the clearance angle for the knife be set at six degrees. Usually that's where it's already set, but um, you should double check that. Then we can push the knife stage closer. I usually, before I start, make sure that it's uh, more or less uh, flush back here so you have enough room on the mechanical movement of the stage. And push it forward so that it is close to the, the sample tip is close to the knife edge without danger of hitting. And then you can tighten down the knife stage using this screw on the side of the stage. Now it's important that the, for a good sectioning that we use the sharpest part of the knife. If you look carefully you can see that the knife has a stress mark from the breaking action. And it, on this knife it, the stress line is closer to the knife edge on the right hand side. That is the sharpest part of the knife. So it's important for good thin sections that the knife edge be evenly wetted by the water in the boat. It's that water that will float the sections off and make it so that it's visible to see them. The trick here is to slightly overfill the boat. We use filtered water so that there's no bacteria that can get onto your samples and obscure your tissue. And we slowly add the water. You don't want to go too fast or else the water will jump over to the back side of the knife and then get on the black face and it takes a while to dry that back off again slightly overfill the boat so you have a convex surface. As you see here, the knife edge is completely wet and then take this small diameter syringe, place it into the water and you'll need to watch through the binoculars or the TV viewing screen if you have the camera active and the water is slowly removed and you'll notice that at a certain point you'll start to get a silver mirror-like finish at the knife edge fairly even uh, mirror surface at the knife edge Alright, so before we can begin cutting, we have to safely approach the black face with the knife. And this is probably one of the hardest parts, because if you rush it, you can accidentally chip your knife, or worse, um, take the tip of your black face off, which was a little bit of work for black trimming. So before we start doing that, we if you look carefully, and it helps sometimes if you turn on the, the back light, uh, there's a little LED light that comes up the back of the knife, you'll notice that the black face is a little crooked compared to the knife edge. So there's a small uh, adjustment screw on the sample holder which will rotate that and then allows you to get the black face parallel to the knife edge. Now you'll notice as I position, as I move the sample up and down, we can actually see a reflection of the knife edge in the black face. And this works the best if you have a black face that's already been sectioned. Say you've uh, done some thick sectioning on this and now we're ready for the thin sectioning. And as you move the knife closer, you see how it moves down towards the bottom of the black face. Now we can lower the black down a little bit 
and re uh, push up the knife a little bit closer. Notice that that gap between the block face and the knife edge is now smaller. And as the reflection of the knife gets close and the, to the bottom of the block, and that gap between the bottom of the block and the knife gets closer, that means we're just about to touch. Now at this point, I usually like to pass through one time to make sure that we're not accidentally going to hit some other place of the block. Approach slowly and carefully. Use the stage micrometer to adjust. Move it closer. Pass through again. Remember to take a clockwise pass of the flywheel. So now we're really close and just about to take a section. And so now here it's so close that really you can't see it anymore. Now you know that we're just really close and we'll just take small adjust advances with the stage micrometer, half a micron to a micron at the most. And then we'll get the first uh, cut of the sample to come off. Almost there, we're getting just a little bit of moisture pickup. off that backlight and there's our first section. Okay, now to cut the thin sections we're going to let the motor do the work. Now the nice thing about this microtome is that it will cut slowly to cut the section and then return to the next cut quickly. But we need to tell it where that slow part is versus the fast part. And that's using the cutting window control on the uh, microtome controller. Position the sample roughly two to three block heights above the knife edge and press the upper cutting window button. Then lower it so that you're just below the knife edge and press the lower cutting window button. And now you're ready to cut. I usually start a little bit thick, um, usually around 90 micrometer, nanometers. and monitor the color of the sections as they come off. Usually it takes us one or two sections before the microtome equilibrates to uh, temperature. We're getting a pale gold colored section to come off. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. And we're getting a kind of a pale, very pale gold to light silver color. So there you have it. We've cut thin sections safely without wrecking our sample, and now we're ready to pick up those thin sections and put them on a grid.